Good morning. Welcome to Light Embassy, taking His glory to the ends of the world. This morning's message is titled, Don't Despise Them Because of Baptism. Don't Despise Them Because of Baptism. And our team scripture is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. I'm reading from the KJV. Paul says, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not of wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of his power. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not of wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of his power. There are folks that have made a religion out of baptism in water. They allow certain kind of division and enmity in the church, branding certain Christians as unsaved because they have not been immersed in water. This is born out of religious tradition and nowhere an accurate teaching by the word of God. The Bible indeed teaches that the accurate form of baptism for the Christian is the baptism by immersion. There aren't different forms of baptism designated for the believer in Christ, but the baptism by immersion. Paul wrote to the Christians at Ephesus and said, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So he says that for all the Christians, we have one baptism. Because we are one body, there's one spirit, there's one hope of our calling, we all have the same Lord, we all have the same faith, therefore we all have the same type of baptism, whether baptism in the spirit or baptism in water is the same. There isn't different kinds of baptism for the Christian. There is one and not different kinds of baptism for Christians, and that baptism for the Christian is the baptism by immersion, baptism by immersion in water, not sprinkling, but baptism by immersion in water. That's how the Lord Jesus was baptized. That's how the apostles and the early disciples, they were all baptized. It was by immersion in water. Baptism in water is important, and every Christian must seek to be baptized by immersion. Having said that, other Christians should also understand that it is not baptism in water that makes one a Christian and stop ignorantly branding certain believers as unsaved because they aren't baptized in water. You are not right just because your pastor or founder of your denomination held that position. It is true because the word of God says so. Paul never made a religion out of baptism in water. The same with Peter. He says, Paul said, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Paul talking about baptism in water said, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Contrary to some Pentecostals, Paul never made a religion out of baptism in water. Because it is not baptism in water, but the gospel that saves. It's believing the gospel and proclaiming the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That says one. In Peter's encounter with Cornelius the Centurion, he and his household received the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues before Peter asked them to baptize in water. Now, the Holy Spirit sent Peter to the house of Cornelius to preach the gospel to Cornelius. And Peter said, when I, I was preaching the gospel, these folks received the Holy Spirit and were speaking in tongues, magnifying the Lord. At that time, they had not been baptized in water. They had not been baptized in water, but yet still, they were speaking in tongues. How can a person speak in tongues when the person has not been saved? How can a person receive the Holy Ghost when he has not, he is not saved? How can a person have the Holy Ghost when he is not saved? So they were saved. So they were saved. But at the time that they were saved and had received the Holy Spirit and were speaking in tongues, they had not been baptized in water. It was after they had been saved, uh, received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. Then Peter said, look at, look, at the, look at what has happened. That these 
Gentiles and received the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues like it happened to us in Acts chapter 2. Therefore, who can forbid them to be baptized in water? That was, it was after that that they went to be baptized them in water. But the church will not read this to understand these things. And then they will go on tell people that, oh, if you have not been baptized in water, you are not saved. No, let's, let's speak the truth. You see, Jesus, the, the master whom we represent, the one who sent us, he is an honest God. He's a God of integrity. He's a God of truth. He doesn't use lies to make people do the right thing. So you don't have to lie to people for them to do the right thing. I don't have to come and tell people that, oh, if you are not baptized in water, you are not saved, so that they go and baptize in water. No, you, you tell them the truth. But yes, to yes, also let them know that the right form of baptism for the Christian is to be baptized in water, to be immersed in water. I don't have to come and lie to the person and say that, oh, if you are not immersed in water, you are not saved. So, 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 so to put fear in the person to go and immerse in water. God, if you are like that, God is, is, against, is against you, it's against that because it's wrong. Because it's wrong because when you do that, then people who are also not baptized in water, but they believe in Jesus, they go to church, they, 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 they do all these kind of things. But then they will also, who also have certain manifestations even of the spirit. I know people, when many years ago, there are people that I moved with in, on campus in USD. They had manifestations of the spirit, but they 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 they, they, they attended. Uh, uh, I think they were Presbyterian, and they had been sprinkled. They have not been immersed in water, but yes, they had manifestations of the spirit. They had manifestations and giftings of the spirit, and I moved. I moved to such folks. They were my friends, and I I let them know that the right form of baptism was immersion. But they didn't mean that they, they were not born again. They didn't mean that they were not saved. How can, how can they have manifestation of the Spirit, gift of the Spirit, if they are not saved? Will you go and tell such people that, oh, because you are not baptized in water, you are not saved? No. So you have to, you have to, 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 to preach the truth. The fact that your denomination is, is, is known by a certain thing, that doesn't mean that you should, you should use that as a yastic for other Christians. That, when the Word of God doesn't say so. The Word of God indeed teaches that the right kind of baptism for the Christian is by immersion. It's by immersion. Every Christian has to be immersed in water. Baptism to be dipped into water. But there's nowhere the Bible teaches that what make, makes you a Christian or what makes you saved is when you are immersed in water. <laughs> right. Actually, there are, many, there are some people, somebody can be, be immersed in water and still not be saved. If he doesn't really in his heart believe in Jesus. So you have to understand that if you really don't believe in Jesus in your heart, you can be made baptized and immersed in water. It's not different from someone who went to a swimming pool to swim. So people should start their religiosity and, 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 and follow the spirit. There are many things, they are all the about religious things that, that, that the Bible says, uh, David talked about in Psalm 103. It says, For Moses knows the ways of God, but the Israelites, they after the acts, ceremonial observances, that's what they have after, they not, not the true spirit of the word. Even the baptism in water, is, they don't even understand what it means. They don't even understand what it, is, it symbolizes. Why? Because after they are immersed in water, how they relieved their Christian life even shows that they didn't even understand it, it, it even in the first place. But they hold on to this religious tradition and brand certain Christians that they are not saved. And this is very wrong. This is very wrong. When you get your theology wrong, just be humble to accept the truth. It's humility. Many times you you, you are then you see that it's because of pride. They, they see that they are wrong, but because of pride, just humbling themselves to, to humble and say they are wrong, they cannot even accept it. But they see it in the world, you show it in the world to them, this, and they see they are wrong. But you, it's all of pride. And if you are, if you are proud, that, that is not of the Holy Ghost. God is not, God is not on your side. He said, sometimes when you, you who come, who are sent come and teach them the truth, they rather, rather to present us as being proud. No, that's not how God sees it. If someone comes to you to show you God's word, you, do you think that God sees that person as proud? No, you the...
you find it difficult accepting the truth of the word. If if someone shows you the word of God and you are proud to accept the word, God doesn't like that because that means it's, it's, it's total arrogance and pride. And pride, and that is wrong. When God speaks, when we see, you have to you have to respect the word of God that if you're a Christian, you are wrong, and the scripture is shown to you. You humble yourself and accept it. If you are not able to do that, anything, any act, act, action from you is of the flesh. It's of the flesh. See, I we didn't I didn't get to where I am. With all these mysteries that I hold, by such an attitude, I was born into Pentecost, but I didn't say that if I found something in the Word and 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 that's not what is uh, and is contrary to what my church was teaching, and God shows me in the Word, then I'll be proud at that time to say that oh, I'm a Pentecostal, so it is this way. Now, if you're like that, God cannot show you so many things, cannot take you deeply no and it when when truth was brought to me when i found truth through the holy ghost i humbled myself to accept it that my that my denomination was wrong because i'm a first it's not about denominations about christianity i'm a christian and not and not belong to any denomination i'm a christian that's what is, is is important so the bible says in Acts chapter 10 from verse 44 to 47 since why Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them, heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, it's about to say, then answered Peter, after this, then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that this should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? It was after then that Peter says that let's go and baptize them in water. You see that. People like being prisoners of traditions than truth. And Jesus said, You make the word of God of non effect by your traditions, by things that I didn't say. You make the word of God of no of no power, of no effect. Because you, you say and do things I didn't say in my word. You see, people like being prisoners of traditions than truth. And when things don't go well, then they blame God. The master says, You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Mighty chapter 22, verse 29. He says, If you don't know the scriptures, you will err. So that person or that lady or that guy, who is basing his doctrine on the word is in truth. You who base your doctrines on sensual appetites, you are in error. So don't think that God agrees with you when you are in error. He doesn't agree with anyone when he's in error. He only agrees with his word when people are in truth. Right? So when someone comes and teach the right thing to you and you you are proud to accept it don't think that god is on your side no 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 god is on the side of the one who holds his word his truth because he sent us to preach his truth and not our mind since you err when you don't base doctrines on the word of god but on sensual appetites today's devotion is not to excuse any christian from baptizing in water every christian should baptize and do it the right way, which is by immersion. Rather, this morning's message is to stop those who erroneously brand certain believers as unsaved just because they aren't baptized in water. Such teachings are born out of ignorance and lack of understanding. God bless you.